Welcome to another edition of the Coach Ken Erickson Show. A rare chance to visit with the Bulls. Demanding part of the schedule. Seven consecutive road games last night in Gainesville and headed off to Tulsa right after this. Coach, let's go back one night to Gainesville, Florida ranked number one in the nation. Bulls right there with them. Eric and Nunn, a terrific pitching opportunity. You had some opportunities early to get on the board, weren't able to cash in, and that was a key part of the game as it turned out. Well, you know, when you, you get an opportunity to go against a very, very good team, and, and Florida has a very, very good team. Their pitching staff is tremendous, you know, three good pitchers, and we saw all three last night. And, you know, the old adage of you try to get a pitcher early. You know, we had an opportunity to get three pitches early in their game, but um, uh, first inning, load the bases up, and an uh, unfortunate type of deal where we weren't able to get the barrel to the ball uh, well enough. But, you know, I once again, I thought our kids, they battled real hard. They didn't back down. They knew there was an opportunity to win a ball game. A hostile crowd, all the challenges that people would think, but um, the way we were looking at things right now, it's about playing against the game. And I thought we did well last night playing against the game but you're not going to win if you don't score. And I thought their pitching staff did a really, really nice job of making some crucial pitches and some crossroad parts of the game. We had first and second, one inning with one out and some pretty good hitters at the plate. So, you know, to, tomorrow's a, a, a different day for us and we, we got to go on. 39 and 11 overall for the Bulls. Three to nothing the final in Gainesville. This pitching staff has been nothing short of spectacular. A long run of scoreless innings in conference play has really lifted you to a great mark in the American. Yeah, you know, I don't think uh, we, we've got to be the quietest <laughs> number 20 ranked team in any sport ever. The amazing part about it is you put together a 23 game winning streak in the middle of your year. You win 37 out of 40 games at, at, at some point, and then another eight game winning streak, and you're playing against number one how many times in three, four, eight, 13, 17. And so the schedule we've played, I think, has set us up very well for whatever we're gonna try to do for the rest of the year. Um, these guys, they're so um, outside the realm of, of what's going outside the field when they come to play the game. We're talking about the girls at USF. They're so focused on the task at hand, and, and that's all you could ever ask, you know. And we've talked about their short memories, they don't have one. Their long-term memories, they don't have one. Uh, the compliments that we're getting from our opposition right now and how far this team has come, in not just two years, but in this year alone. You know, you start out two and seven against some good competition, and you're probably not in five of those ball games. And where we're at right now, I feel good about our, our maturation, but we, now we have a, a stretch that we have to finish strong in. Bulls on the road at Tulsa in a crucial conference series. We'll preview that later in the show. Stay with us. Much more to come as we continue on the Coach Ken Erickson Show. University of South Florida is a regional powerhouse with global significance, leading advances that are changing the world. Now a leader among the nation's universities in research, healthcare, and just being cool. The place where young men and women train to become the best. This is where the bulls run. Welcome back to the Coach Ken Erickson Show. As the Bulls continue to work through their season, they have had some challenges away from the field to deal with, and the support that Meredith Bissett has re uh, received as this process has become public has been really remarkable to see. <clears throat> to people outside the team, this seemed to happen so fast. I mean, it, just, it seems like she would just got her first hit. She was playing in games, and then the announcement comes down. Can you take us through how this developed, how the team found out, and, and where the situation is as we speak today? Yeah, you, know, you, know, you don't sign up for these type of things, you know, and, um, and, but that's part of life also. And, and the longer you're in the game, for myself, you included, in respect of being here for a long time, we've seen some things happen at South Florida. But when it hits you directly, it's one of your players, the players that you recruited and their families, it, it's a little different. Uh, Meredith was having some back issues in January, and we thought all that stuff it had really a significant uh, showing of like an L5-S1 herniated disc or a, or a 
bulging disc thing. That's what she was getting treated for. Um, and then she came back after the, uh, e and it went away. And then she comes back after the Easter weekend where she was in North Carolina. We played East Carolina that weekend and she uh, came up with a crucial base hit RBI, her first base hit of her career and, and at a great time put us ahead against East Carolina. And um, her and Erica Nunn stayed over in North Carolina. We do that for our kids there on Easter weekend. They don't have class on Monday, so they stayed there. But she came back and she was in a lot of pain, our, our trainer. Uh, Taylor got her an MRI scheduled for uh, Wednesday morning, I believe it was, and uh, we were out training on the uh, on the football practice facility. And I got a phone call from um, one of the orthopods, Trey Romali, who works with us, and said, "Listen, I I got to tell you something." And um, you know, the X-ray showed that we there was a growth in that area. And uh, you know, he used the word tumor. I was, yeah, I was, I, I don't even remember from that point till whenever I got back up to the building, you know, and the worst things in your mind go through. And then she has to go through evaluation at that point. And we've got Houston that weekend. Um, so they, she goes through some evaluation and they figure out, you know, exactly what it is, a chordoma uh, cancer. And it's in her lower back um, and some really, uh, precarious areas for the nerve endings. Um, she had some consultations and the best place for her to go was the Cordoma Clinic up in Boston. So Meredith left on the Sunday of the last game of the Houston series and then she was up in Boston I believe that Thursday. Uh, got some you know great news, some positive news about how the process was going to work. She was very happy about it which is important and then so was her family. Um, but she starts May 5th uh, five weeks straight five weeks of uh, radiation in Boston so her family has to move up to Boston for that time she comes back to North Carolina after the five weeks or about a three-week recovery period to get the body strong again and then she's going to go for some surgery to remove uh, hopefully the whole tumor uh, what goes on down there and then she's got another month of recovery uh, two weeks probably in Boston and back in North Carolina and then she starts rehab so the process is a long process um, I think more than anything else, you know, she has been um, incredibly strong and positive about trying to make sure that we're okay. The day that she left, you know, I went out to my locker out here and, and she had already left three hours before that. And I opened my locker and out falls a note and, and it says, Coach, I don't want you to worry about me. I've got this. We're going to get this together and, you know, I'll be back. And, uh, you know, I mean, you know, at that point, you know, it was a little tough for me to get out of there at the end of the day, but, um, you know, she's kept everybody's spirits up. We've had incredible response through social media and, and the great part about, and, and this is where I found out about the positive parts of social media, because I'm not a big social media guy. I don't know the, the tweets and the whatever stuff that goes on, and I don't even know how, but um, from what we're getting, uh, not just nationwide, but internationally, uh, you find out that social media has really uh, decreased the space of the world has made the world a lot smaller and you know the the responses that we're getting from college teams and professional players and and coaches and people in general uh, that are related to the sorority of softball and then the fraternity sorority of athletics itself uh, has been nothing short of, of phenomenal and very humbling to me but i'm sure just has made meredith feel very very welcome in everybody else's eyes Let's take a look at some of that social media support and also a look at a press conference that took place during the week. Assistant coach Tommy Santiago and Aston Donovan as well as we find out more about Meredith Bissett. Hey Robert, we heard you got you started treatments and we just want to wish you good luck and um, we're supporting you. So go Bulls! Go Bulls! Hi Meredith, we're the University of Maryland softball team. personality. Uh, she's definitely someone that's always smiling, always positive. Um, she's always looking to lighten the mood. So if you come home, you've had a rough game. She's always there with a hug or um, just something to make you laugh and feel better. She loves to dance. She loves to sing. Um, we're like in a lot of ways, like we just like to have fun and watch movies together, Disney movies. Um. A lot of the stuff on social media, I mean, teams have been reaching out like tremendous 
you know, how widespread this is right now. And she's getting that support and she's not in this fight alone. I can't stress enough and can't thank enough all the, you know, softball community that's kind of stepped in from the West Coast to the Northeast to, I mean, you name it, you know, they're behind her 100%. You know, and I've texted her a, a couple times saying, what do you think of all this, you know, and she, she's amazed by it. And I said, well, people love you, you know, there's a lot of people that are supporting you and they're behind you. I wouldn't say it's a constant reminder of what we're fighting for, but more of just, um, she's our teammate. And even though she's not here, she's still with us and we still think about her and love her just the same. Really remarkable outpouring. Coach, we talk about the things that affect a team that you know people on the outside may not be aware of. And I think back to that Houston series, game three, the day that she left, was the end of the 23 game winning streak. And it was a game where the Bulls made a couple of uncharacteristic throwing errors and just you know weren't quite themselves. And you, you don't know the story at that point. And you think, boy, not a very good day. And, and you have no concept of the things that can affect a team and can affect players as they go out and try to do their work every day. You know, I've, I've always thought that family issues are private issues and, and you keep it close to the vest and, and our team did a very, very good job of making sure we stayed within the USF cocoon, the softball cocoon of what was going on and not really using it as any type of excuse or reason. And, you know, we were just trying to take care of our own family. And, you know, after a game like that, um, as a father, you know, what do you tell your daughters? You know, um, played hard, obviously you did. You know, we know that there's other things on your mind at this point, you know, an emotional part of saying goodbye to your teammate three hours earlier who's going for treatment, you know. Um, and I know some girls are planning up to go see her in North Carolina on our bye weekend, but um, yeah, you know, it was one of those tough days and uh, I thought we played very well. I thought we maintained a maturity level very, very well. and. And uh, like you said, the uncharacteristic things that happened that day, okay, man, whatever, you know, that's life. I mean, you know, if, if wins and losses were life and death, there'd be a lot of dead people and it's not, you know, at all. It's, it's about, you know, maintaining a, a group dynamic, which this team is probably the most mature team that I've ever coached from day one to this point. And this is before, and I was saying this before, you know, Meredith's situation came along, but um, our athletic director said something to me the other day, he said, you know, if there was one team on this campus um, that could maintain this level, uh, it's your team. And that says a lot about the, the families of the kids that we've recruited and are here uh, and the character of them. And then the support that we found out from all the programs here at, at USF and uh, administration and phone calls from the president's office and obviously all the people that I've known for a while reaching out. So. Um, we're in a good place and we're positive and uh, we know that she's in great hands at the Cordoma Clinic. She's in great hands with her mom and dad and uh, she knows that we're with her on every single moment. Puts a lot in perspective. Stay with us when we come back. We'll talk about the trip to Tulsa coming up on the Coach Ken Erickson Show. University of South Florida is a regional powerhouse with global significance, leading advances that are changing the world. Now a leader among the nation's universities in research, healthcare, and just being cool. The place where young men and women train to become the best. This is where the bulls run. Welcome back to the Coach Ken Erickson Show, Tulsa. And this is an interesting one for a lot of reasons. Really good Tulsa team hosting the conference tournament also. So this is the first of two trips and the Bulls with a chance to extend that great conference record. And first time we've ever been there. You know, I, we, <laughs> this might be the furthest west uh, that we have gone for a conference um, you know, game and uh, a little bit out of our way. Uh, we're unfamiliar with the Oklahoma area, except for the team that went there in 2012 to the World Series. But um, yeah, we've never played at the Tulsa Park. We have no idea what it's about. 
but we have played against them. We know that they're a very, very good team. Very good pitching, very good defense, very aggressive offensively, especially in their first four or five batters. Uh, have some decent speed. You know, so if you put all those things together as a scouting report, is it something we haven't seen all year? No, we've seen it. You know, there's, there's not much we haven't seen. You know, now it's maintaining the level of, of enthusiasm, the level of energy, all those type of things as we are in this middle of this stretch of, of, of craziness. Um, so we'll see. We'll see how we do, and it'll be very interesting uh, to see how we respond after a long road trip and uh, come back after a day of no practice because last night was a late, late night game uh, and getting back here late. So we won't practice at all today, and then tomorrow we play. Bulls have done such a great job setting the table at the top of the lineup. Wysocki and Weber, it's more than just those two, but yeah. those are the ones that really come to mind in that one-two spot. The on-base percentage at or about 500. I mean, that's that's almost like starting the game with players on base. Yeah, no, you make the same mistake that I make. Every once in a while I call Wyckoff Wysocki. There it's you that go. W-Y yeah. deal yeah. there, so, <laughs> but I'm with you. Uh, no, they... They, um, they have been doing a great, great job, you know, and Kristen is really learning to be that leadoff batter that, you know, she sets the situation up. She has to battle hard. Even with two strikes, she's got to battle hard. And just because she's so fast, she can make a mistake. She can miss hit a ball and be safe. Wyckoff, uh, or rather Weber, uh, tremendous bat control. And so to have somebody like that uh, behind somebody with speed, you have a lot of different options. And then We've moved Lauren Evans into the three spot right now, really good back control person, puts the ball in play, very aggressive early in the count. Um, for her there to move runners and also to drive runners in and then you know behind them, I mean, holy smoke, Spivey and Nunn, and then you got Santos and Fung. You know, so you've got some pretty good RBI people behind people that set the table. Looking forward to three games in Tulsa, big series with UCF right here at the end of the month. Coach, thanks, have a great trip west. I appreciate everything and uh, Hashtag Merit Bear Strong and go on there and support Merit Bissett and her fight and uh, we really appreciate it. You'll be amazed at the people that have reached out. Make sure that you join that group and we'll see you again soon on the Coach Ken Erickson Show.